Hello, my name's uh, Dr. Peter Harrop. I'm from the Analysts ID TechX. I'm going to share with you for a few minutes, if I may, a report we've done on energy harvesting for electronic devices 2020 to 2040. So it's got 20 year forecasts. And uh, I'm going to talk particularly about um, watches, but uh, really bear in mind that's just a vehicle for the conversation. The report uh, and the subject extends to uh, many other devices, medical devices, very important, uh, but pollution monitors and other things. Okay. The um, picture on the cover that I've just gone forward from was, by the way, use of two forms of energy harvesting. It was the use of thermoelectrics from the heat of your wrist, and it was use of opaque photovoltaics that's a sign of the times using more than one it's going to be using uh, three in due course for some of these devices because they need so much electricity as they have more functions added you know what's happening with smart watches but let's begin uh, by looking at what's needed um, in general so if it's standby it might be 0.1 of a microwatt if it's uh, a fully functioning smart watch on all the time. It might need um, right up at the um, watts level, uh, like a laptop computer going up to whatever, 50 watts or so. So there's a broad spread here and sensors as well as actuators are involved because as you know, uh, you have medical devices now that are pacemakers embedded in people, more of that in a minute. Uh, drug pumps and even uh, functions with consumer products that involve actuation, not just sensing and uh, displaying. There's my Internet of Things nodes, and as you know, they add more and more sensors there. There's just uh, four in that particular case. And all the time, what we're trying to do is go to energy independent electronics. We're trying to um, reduce the extent to which we need the battery, make the battery last more between charges. But a lot of applications, we really don't want to charge at all and we don't want to change the battery at all. And Internet of Things is a case in point. It's never gone anywhere near to the billions a year that were promised. Um, part of the reason is because it, there is not satisfactory energy harvesting that's affordable and reliable and small enough and light enough for us to do 3D sensing of oil spills in the ocean or monitoring every tree in a forest fire or avalanches and so on. So it's stuck at the millions to tens of millions level, uh, but a huge breakthrough would be if we made it totally in an energy independent. Uh, there are four prizes though that I want to mention here. One is there's a race on for the smart watch that never plugs in, never has a battery change. Uh, that will make the others look like a horse and cart. So big, big um, work going on there, not fully solved yet. Internet of Things I've mentioned, um, but in medical, there are 600,000 pacemakers implanted every year. They have batteries that don't last more than about seven years. You can uh, charge them um, sometimes through the body from outside, but the battery itself just doesn't last uh, a long time and um, when you think they're fitted sometimes to two-year-olds and they've got to be literally cut open uh, when they are nine-year-olds to change the battery uh, I think there's one word for that it's barbaric so we have to do better the diabetes epidemic will soon surpass 500 million people and coming in uh, instead of glucose test strips and um, uh, jabbing yourself is the fitted uh, gl blood glucose monitors that are electronic devices they need power and yes they're on the outside of you but it would be really nice if they um, lasted a long time between charges or battery changes and preferably never needed either so I've described four challenges there are many more so using watches as a vehicle but this could be 
and blood glucose monitors, defibrillators, whatever. Um, in this case, they do see the daylight quite often. And on the left is an old one with amorphous silicon. Uh, a more modern approach is to make three times the electricity per unit area by going from amorphous silicon to three five compounds. And then later, uh, what Toyota is <coughs> trying on a um, on a car at the moment, which is a triple junction 3.5 structure, uh, which would cover a wide spectrum of light. Um, why can't that appear on a watch or a medical device near you? That would be at least four times the electricity per unit area. In the meantime, though, everything helps. And if you haven't got much area for photovoltaics on your smartwatch, then in this case, they call it Power Glass Pro Solar. And this is the new Garmin watch, which has some assistance, certainly not energy independence, but it has some assistance from what I'd call a solar window. It's the technology of a solar window, isn't it? Here we look at what they call in the watch business electrokinetic power. It's uh, electrodynamics, the familiar um, equivalent of a bicycle dynamo. And these are used on a very large number of electronic watches. If they were in movement all the time, uh, then they would generate many watts. But of course, they're not. You take, may take it off at night or whatever. Uh, but this is another one that we could add to the many we have just described. That's why I said at the start, we will move with some of these more critical applications to having three, maybe four types of energy harvesting. There's a trend to flexible energy harvesting, thermoelectrics, piezoelectrics, capacitive energy harvesting, such as dielectric elastomer generators, or in this one, uh, electrets and triboelectrics, which is a way of harvesting motion uh, by a combination of contact electrification and induction. And triboelectrics is very good at the low frequencies, such as the heart, heartbeat and the ocean waves and whatever. So, many choices you get your electricity by area instead of by efficiency so in the report there are detailed tables obviously comparing many different options there are lots of options here that are relevant to electronic devices and um, some have cost issues size issues um, uh, poisons that could be released from the compound the thing itself isn't poisonous but it, if it was wrongly um, abused or wrongly disposed of. Um, maybe some have, uh, as we show, uh, the actual source of the energy that you're harvesting is not often encountered. That's bad news, or they're very intermittent. And that is bad news too. So this is a summary of a table. And then I have effectively um, covered the time scale for my talk. And so here is the report again and a little bit more about it. We think this is a big thing for the future. That is us. Thank you and goodbye.